Welcome back to Good Evening KU. I'm Emily. And I'm Anna. And we're finally back yeah. after for so long. We haven't, you know, been here in a second. I know. It, was, it had been like almost three weeks since I saw Anna. And we're roommates. But right. she was in London. How was, was that? was. London was really cool. We went with my dad for business and stuff. Me and my mom just kind of tagged along with him. We saw a lot of museums and like shopped around. All the food was so good there. It was awesome. But I didn't get to see you because um, you... We're at TCU yeah, when I, before I yeah, came back. Yeah, I left like the day that she was coming back from London. And so I actually took a um, road trip with a couple of my uh, friends who are mm -hmm. in um, Playmakers and Ripley's right. Takeover with me. And so we drove the eight hours down to Fort Worth and we went to the TCU football game, which was really cool. Just like get to be so close and on the field and um, all that stuff. So that was really cool. But right. You guys look like you had a really cool view right at the end. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. It was really fun. But how was your break? My break was really good. I got to see a lot of my friends and stuff from like when they were out of town. We did Thanksgiving, of course. We made two turkeys, which was super fun. One was Cajun, one was just like a normal one. And then that's me and my brother right there. He's a lot taller than I am. <laughs> um, we don't really look a lot alike, but um, that's us, you know, chowing down. And then usually with my mom's side of the family, we do bingo all the time. So that's my mom and my cat, his name is Tito. And <laughs> looks like she's about to win there, but she ended up not winning. But um, Bella, she looks like she's going ATV. I know that she did that after she went home, which is super, super cool. Yeah, she went home to her farm. Yes. And then, and then Carolyn, um, I think she got to just hang out with some friends and family up yes. in Chicago. We have a lot of people from Chicago on right. our show. Out of town. Yes. And then Cammy, she went and saw all of her friends when she went home, which is so much fun. I know I was so excited to see my friends too. Yeah. And then Jessica, Jessica. actually went um, Black Friday shopping, and she took a pretty picture of the sunrise. It looks right. so gorgeous. She I said was that not was... up that early. Oh, but... <laughs> I, I don't go Black Friday shopping, but now I think I might because of these sunsets. Sunrises, <laughs> sorry. And then there's me at the TCU game. That was after the game. It was a really close game. It was actually so fun. I think it was like 31-28. They right. won on like a last-second field goal. But it was so cool to be down on the field. And then... Um, we got reindeer. Is yeah. that reindeer? Yeah. I think someone went and saw a few <laughs> reindeer. I think they said there was three of them. Um, yeah. Kristen did, Kristen, yeah. Kristen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like it was Looks fun. like Donna and Blizzard. And then Margaret went um, and saw a pretty tree with her mom, also up in Chicago. Lots of Chicago people. Um, and then... Brayden went yeah. and she said that she made um, dinner with her grandma and her mom, which is so sweet. Yeah. And then Nolan, I think that's his brother. It looks like maybe they're picking out a Christmas tree. Yeah, there's a lot of Christmas trees. I in the love his there. outfit. That's okay. so fun. I think I might have to ask him where he got that. Yeah. <laughs> that's so much fun. Your mom actually called us last night. She, she was, did. Uh, Wait. Okay, she actually did. Okay, my mom FaceTimed us last night and she went to Target and she saw a shirt or like some sort of like jumpsuit thing yeah. that was like an elf thing that was exactly like that. And she thinks. I think she might be like shipping us in some of those matching like <laughs> There was like, like these long like sweater dresses. Like there was like a Santa one like, and like, like an elf, but they were really funny. But <laughs> Nolan's was definitely cuter than yeah, those I ones. Was say, I think Nolan took the cake and won yeah, that Yeah, but. but it looks like everyone had a really fun break. Yeah. After the TCU game, I was actually sick with the flu, which was not fun yeah. at all. So that kind of sucked, but it was but just nice. you still nice got to like see to, your dogs. I know you really yeah, wanted to see them. Yeah, I got to see my dogs. It was just really nice to just like go home and have a break from school and of just course. have some time with friends and family. But right. we are rounding the corner on the end of the semester. Oh we gosh. have what? Finals? Two, three weeks left? Yeah. Three? Yeah. I mean, I only have final projects, but like, yeah. you know, we have an oral exam tomorrow mm -hmm, for both for of us Spanish. or in Spanish yeah. together. And I'm um, kind of excited for that. But yeah, yeah the week's going to be a good week this week. So yeah. 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 But um, after this short break, we'll be back with an interview. Did you know that in the United States, between 9 and 12 million kids don't have internet access at home for school and remote learning? This issue is called the digital divide and has become more prevalent as schools become more reliant on computers and cell phones for school. The problem is families with low incomes are not able to provide internet access for their children, putting them at a disadvantage in school compared to other kids who can afford devices like iPhones and Mac computers. For more information, please visit everyoneon.org so we can close the gap on the digital divide. 
Welcome back. I'm here with a special guest from the University of Daily Kansan. This is Associate Sports Editor Andrew Lind. Thank you for coming in. So what do you do as the Associate Sports Editor? I do a lot. Um, actually, my counterpart, Nathan Swaffer, and I, he is the sports editor, and so I'm kind of his right-hand man, the backup, um, if you will. Um, we split up a lot of our responsibilities. So we have a staff of 15 writers. I don't know if that's a record, but that's the most people on the sports staff that have ever been here since I've been here. Cool. Um, and so um, I like to think that I'm like the organizer, the leader, and he's awesome. like the writer. And so he takes on a lot of the writing load, um, organizing kind of what writer's going to cover what sports, and then I kind of take a, the, the back half, the behind the scenes, um, reaching out to sports information directors for credentials and bringing in guest speakers and kind of running our meetings. So um, whatever Nathan's not good at or whatever he doesn't like to do, I like to do and I'm good at. Whatever I'm not good at, he's good at. So Perfect. Um, it's, a, it, it's a great balance. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, what's the favorite, like your favorite thing that you've ever done as being a part of the University of Daily Kansan? The first thing that comes to mind is earlier this month when I went to Madison Square Garden. Oh, that's uh, awesome. For the Champions Classic, just to be in that environment with um, the industry's best professionals um, and just obviously the biggest college basketball stage, KU Michigan State, Duke, Kentucky. Um, you know, shout out to Dean Brill and the journalism school for paying our way. So that was probably top two if not one yeah that's awesome and you saw a nice jayhawk win too so that's always super yeah. fun um what are you looking to do in the future with this job where are you looking to go yeah so this is going to be my last semester um, as editor um, of the kansas oh, wow. next semester i'll be writing um, a little bit in basketball here and there but really kind of focusing on the tv side so i'm just trying to get more reps on air um, but writing is always good so for all you guys who are watching writing is the foundation for everything journalism if you can become a good writer you can become a good um, a good public speaker so um, always good to have that in your back pocket that's awesome I love that piece of advice um, where can people find the UDK yeah so we're all online unfortunately that's just the new age of um, journalism so Kansan.com um, but we are printing basketball sections you know um, ripping up the newspapers and yeah, having confetti that. at Allen Field House is one of the mainstays of the University of Kansas. So um, we're printing eight papers for 16 home games. We're printing two at a time. Um, that's just how our printing um, kind of deal works up in St. Joe. Um, so make sure when you go to games, you take part in the festives, the, the festivities, excuse <laughs> me, and grab a newspaper. That's awesome. Um, do you have anything else for our viewers? I think that's it. We're always looking for people to join our staff. You know, there's not many requirements. All I say is if you love sports and you're willing to learn, um, I'm happy to have you. So um, I'm always around the J School, so you know where to find me. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, after this, we'll be back with Kristen and Nolan with the news. Living a healthy lifestyle can be very important. Make sure you get plenty of exercise every day. Even your dogs can use exercise and water. Look like this. Not like this. Look like this. Not this. Welcome back. I am Nolan. And I'm Kristen. This is your Monday Good Evening KU News Update. Countries all over the world are are reacting to a new COVID strain called Amontron. Several countries have has resurrected travel from South Africa, while the governor of New York State has declared a state of emergency, even though the new strain has not been decided yet. Kansas State Representative Aaron Coleman was arrested this weekend for the second time this fall. The 21-year-old was charged with ba misdemeanor battery last month after a family dispute and is suspected of drunk driving after his arrest on Saturday morning on I-70 in Douglas County. Governor Laura Kelly said that the legislature should remove Coleman from office if he does not resign. It in sports, the football team ended the season with a 34-28 loss to West Virginia on Saturday. The Jayhawks will finish 2-10 overall, and Lance Leopold, first year. 
but the general feeling is positive. In the final three games of KU beat Texas and lost to TCU and West Virginia, each by less than a touchdown, Coach Leopold said that the preparation for next year will start right away with the players hitting the weight room as early as today. Uh, yes, yes, and that'll that'll continue. We have a lot of development work to do, and and again, it's within reason of of uh, you know coming off a season. And Matt has a plan, and um, you know we'll meet Monday and 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 start talking about that as coaches get on the road. And and uh, but yes, we we need to take advantage of uh, the opportunities that we have to continue in our development, especially with such a young roster up until the end of the semester. The volleyball team also ended their regular season on Saturday with the victory over Kansas State. The Jayhawks finished the season with four straight victories and a record of 16 and 11. The team gathered on Selection Sunday to learn their fate. KU will play Oregon in the first round of the NCAA tournament at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday in Omaha. The men's basketball team separated its first defeat of the season on Friday with a 74 loss, 73 loss to Dayton. The Jayhawks bounced back on Sunday, knocking off of Lona 96 to 83. To finish in third place at the ESPN event Invitational, KU is now 5 and 1 and will next play on Friday night in New York City against. St. John's tip-off at schedule for 6 p.m. The women's team split a couple of games at their tournament in Las Vegas. After falling 68-58 to 11th ranked Tennessee on Friday, KU bounced back with an 81-55 victory over UTEP on Saturday. Junior Holly Kerskeeter scored 22 points to lead the Jayhawks. Kansas is now 5-1 overall with the next three games at home in Allen Fieldhouse. First up is UT RGV on Wednesday with a tip off at 7 p.m. And that, and, and that will wrap it up for today's news update. After the break, Braden will be back to tell us what to expect for weather this week. Please keep watching. Why doesn't my skin look like theirs? Why is my nose so big? I'm never gonna look like those girls. Hi, welcome back. I'm Brandy McBroom and I'm here to give you your weather. So, for the headlines for this week, uh, we're having very warm temperatures today, just a few degrees shy from the record high, but tomorrow will be a bit cooler, uh, but those record warm temperatures will return, especially on Thursday, but starting after Sunday night, those colder temperatures will return. Right now, it is 70 degrees, very warm for this time of year, and winds are from the southwest at 5 miles per hour. For tonight, we'll cool down quite a bit, a uh, low of 37 degrees. Winds will be from the south at 5 miles per hour with clear skies. Uh, those cool temperatures will continue into tomorrow. There's still, temperatures will still be above average for the year, but a little bit cooler than today. Winds will shift uh, from the northeast at 5 miles per hour. We'll see mostly sunny skies. And, uh, Thursday, we're going to see a forecast of 72 degrees for our high, and that is two degrees above the record high we have for Lawrence Airport, set in 2001 with a high of 70 degrees. So that is almost, or it's around 23 degrees above average, so we're definitely warm for this time of year. And uh, now for your seven-day forecast, uh, Monday, it was nice, it was 70 degrees, sunny skies. We're going to see sunny skies for pretty much the next seven days. Uh, cooler temperatures on Tuesday, but they'll continue to warm into midweek. And uh, your weekend will be mid-50s, but after Sunday, we'll be seeing some much colder temperatures. And 
that is all I have for you. I'm Braden McBroom. Have a good evening and see you next time.